Hey guys, Mono here with a quick little video talking about patch 17, which is now out for PC. And this patch brings a huge amount of bug fixes and a bunch of quality of life improvements, which are very much welcome. So without further delay, I will talk about the most important bug fixes that you need to be aware of, as well as going over the major quality of life improvements. So let's start by talking about vehicles with improved mobility for the medium Sherman tank. I'm sure my buddy Fresh Baked Goods will be very happy with this change. I've tried it a bit, you know, it drives much better than it used to. It seems to be a bit faster in its turn rate and stuff like that. I'm not a huge tanker. I haven't been a huge tanker since update 11. Uh, more on that on another video. But yeah, uh, this change is very good. It brings the Sherman medium tank up to par with the P4, at least from what I've tested. So that's a positive change. The second is a decreased rate at which the trucks decelerate, allowing drivers more control over their speed. So now what happens is if you let go of W while driving a truck, the truck just keeps going forward more naturally rather than slowing down dramatically like it used to. This kind of allows you to, you know, be able to turn without having to always be at max speed or always hitting the brakes when you're trying to maneuver around the town or, you know, different uh, difficult areas. I didn't find the trucks to be super hard to control, but this is a welcome change nonetheless. And lastly, and more importantly, relating to vehicles, they have increased the reload duration of the US Jumbo 75 and the 76 Sherman to eight seconds, bringing them on par with the Tiger. So the Tiger, Basically, I mean, they nerfed the Sherman rather than buffing the Tiger, which is what I would have done or what I would have liked uh, for them to do. But yeah, this at least now the 76 isn't a straight up much better tank than the Tiger. Now they are on par in terms of reload. So that means if you're in a Tiger facing a 76, you know, it doesn't matter. Like if you get your first shot in, the 76 won't be able to kill you faster than you are able to fire that second shot. So that's a good change. After that, we have a change that I am really, really happy for, which is that they have removed the weapon sway when you're using the binoculars. So now you, you get like a static picture when you're using the binos. They don't sway and move around, making it much easier for you as a squad leader to be able to mark objectives to be able to mark enemy positions or tanks or stuff like that without having your scope moving all around the place and making this extremely hard and leaving you exposed as you try and make a mark. So this is a very welcome change and I'm glad it's in this patch. After that, we have smoother tactical map zooming, which I honestly like couldn't tell the difference but I guess it's there and, you know, it's smoother, I guess. <laughs> a more significant change is they've changed the hedge row assets found throughout Carantan, Omaha, PHL, SMDM, SME, and Utah. And these hedge row assets, these new hedge row assets are much larger than they used to be. So, you know, they are more clear in terms of what you can go over or not, like what you can traverse or not traverse. I'm not a huge fan of them being much taller than they used to be, which means a lot more shadows on the map. So, you know, but at least now it's more clear what you can shoot through and what you can't and what you can traverse and what you can't. So I guess that's a positive change. And lastly, we have a change to the way nameplate occlusion uh, fades out to reduce flickering. So for example, if you used the nameplate occlusion in a forest map, Every single time a person would run behind a tree, the thing like the, the icon would flicker back and forth between being visible or not, which was very distracting and very annoying. That, you know, I haven't been able to test it on maps like Hurtgen, but I did try it out on SME, sorry, on Carantan. And I found some strange behavior where it was showing up as visible through a wall when it shouldn't. So I guess this needs a bit more work, but if it does work, as intended on the trees and stuff, then I guess, you know, that's a positive change over having it flicker back and forth. So overall, it seems to be better, but it still needs some work. There's also a new behavior when you try and quit a match before the match is over, where you will basically get prompted that the server isn't able to uh, register your XP gains, which I guess you know, that's more information for new players that didn't know that. So I guess that's good.
but it just seems like an extra step which is kind of unnecessary when you're trying to quit a match. After that, the patch notes go into a lot of server admin changes and improvements basically to the Archon console and stuff like that, which will make administration much easier, which is obviously much welcome. And then we get into a bunch of bug fixes, many of which I've been expecting for the past like two years or something of playing this game. One of them, and at least for me, the most infuriating one is that they seem to have fixed the loadout bug where no matter which loadout you select, you spawn with the first loadout. So they're not sure if they fixed this or not. So they're calling this a speculative fix, which at least it's better than nothing. But, you know, that's going to take a lot of time to see if they fixed it or not. But any improvement towards a fix here is much welcome. This is one of the most annoying bugs in the entire game where you can't select the loadout or the weapon or whatever that you want to use in that moment. Like say you want a satchel charge as the AT and you spawn with a rocket. It's very game breaking because you can't do what you intend to do. So, you know, <laughs> hopefully this is fixed because this has been a bane of my existence for way too long. There's way too many fixes for me to go over all of them. So I'll just focus on what I think are the most important ones. And one of them is that they have fixed the FG-42 bullets landing lower than the crosshair on the FG-42. So Terry Dactyl, my buddy, is going to be very happy about that because the FG-42 really was kind of unusable because you had to aim higher than usual with the crosshair and it just made, you know, you would obscure your target with the big, uh, like, post-style crosser that it has. This will make the FG-242 finally more usable than it, it was. So I'm looking forward to using that gun and actually trying it out for the first time since update 11. A huge fix that is very much welcome is that they have fixed the trucks ramming objects and getting glitched with, you know, like a tree protruding from across like the the hood of the truck and the truck getting stuck they seem to have fixed that at least that's in the patch notes so that just means less trucks getting stuck uh when randomly colliding against something that is a very very much welcome change i still hope that they introduce some sort of mechanic to get trucks and tanks unstuck when they do become stuck maybe taking uh, a page from what they've done on squad or I believe on Postscriptum as well, but this is a nice fix to have. Another is th that they have fixed a number of client crashes. They haven't gone into specifics, but I've definitely had more crashes since update 11 than before update 11, specifically when alt tabbing to do something else on the computer, that would almost always crash the game for me, or at least like, I don't know, one out of five times or something. So I'm really glad that you know we are getting a more stable client hopefully the alt tab situation is much improved with that fix the last fix that i want to talk about is in smdm they have fixed the players spawning at middle uh, ushq where you could spawn extremely far away from the vehicles and already delaying the start of the round for the us team so it's really good that they fixed this unfortunately horkin forest south spawn point for the US also has the same problem and you know I tested it and they haven't fixed that it's not that it's not on the patch notes they just haven't fixed it we're not getting this on this patch so Hurricane Forest South Spawn Point is still a problem and one last one actually before I forget is that they have fixed the purple texture issue with the LOD transitions in some assets and some houses and some of the maps so hopefully no more like flickering purple textures when you're looking through the binoculars or are looking at an asset that is extremely far away. That was more common in update 11 than it was in previous patches of the game and in previous updates. So hopefully, like I haven't really tested this, but hopefully that's fixed because it was extremely annoying. And that's kind of it, guys. It's not like a huge update. I thought the MG... Uh, the static MG for the tanks was coming in this update. It seems like that's not the case, which is unfortunate. But at least we do get a significant amount of fixes and quality of life issues improved, which are very much welcome. 
I haven't been able to notice any major performance differences with the new assets and the you know new changes to the maps and stuff like that. So let me know down in the comment section if you are experiencing any better or worse performance. That's going to be largely relegated to the specific hardware that you're using and stuff like that. But, you know, just let me know down in the comment sections if you have better or worse performance. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, then give it a like and think about subscribing to the channel. And as always, thank you for watching and I hope I will catch you in the next one.